welcome back to the Developer Landscape series. In this series, I cover topics related to developer tools. These tools help developers get the job done with higher quality and convenience. If you're picking up this series in the middle, you can clone the examples from this series from GitHub. To do this, open the bit.ly link on your screen in your browser, and this will take you to the GitHub repo. You can clone the code by clicking on the clone or download button. The GitHub URL that you see may start with HTTPS and that's fine. Just copy the contents to your clipboard. In your terminal, change to a working directory. I like to put all of my source code in a directory called SRC. Type git clone and paste the GitHub URL and finally hit enter. And now to the show. In the previous episode, I covered virtual ENV. And now we'll move on to testing in Python. We're going to look at talks and mocking in Python. OK, talks. Talks is a Python automation utility that enables you to run your tests. It uses virtual ENV to isolate your test environments. This is really great because it automatically creates virtual environments for each version of Python you want to test. The result is that you avoid contaminating your dependencies and app when going through your dev test cycles. There's a lot of other detail on Tox that I'm really not going to go into, but we'll use Tox in the example later in this episode, so I wanted to cover it. Tox is configured using a tox.ini file. In the example, uh, you can see that I have two environments that I want to automate and test. A default test, which is designated by pi36, and the test env section. This uses nose as a testing environment. The other environment is using pytest for it. Uh, I've intentionally configured Tox to only run nose tests and pytest tests in each of their respective environments. Nose and pytest have different ignore commands, and you can see those in each section of the ini file. These days, PyTest seems to have become more popular than Nose, so check it out. So if I run Tox against my Norris project, you can see that it runs two times. First it ran the Nose unit test based tests, and the second time it ran PyTest tests, which is what we expected. On to talking about testing. I don't intend this to be a full tutorial on unit testing. Instead, I want to focus on mocking API calls with Python or in Python. OK, what is mocking? For the purposes of this screencast, I'm talking about mocking REST API calls that might exist in your application. When you include REST APIs in your app, you introduce an external dependency on testing your app. This means that your tests will fail if the test environment can't reach the API, or if the API is down. Or if you're building a client before the server is ready, maybe the API doesn't even exist yet. As a result, you will mock up the API using some kind of tooling. There are various techniques for doing this, including using an external service, but I'm going to demonstrate using a couple mocking packages that keep everything self-contained. To demonstrate this stuff, I have a small project that makes API calls to the Chuck Norris Joke API. It's a fairly standard Python package layout. The Norris subdirectory contains both the main logic for the package and the tests. Inside services.py, you can see the three functions that make the API calls. You'll notice that I'm using the very popular requests library. That's an important thing because some of the mocking libraries depend on the requests library. In init.py, you can see that I'm exposing two of the functions. And finally, the test subdirectory. There are two files that demonstrate the same tests. One is using unit test and one is using pytest. As mentioned earlier, I'm really going to just focus on mocking API requests in these test cases. There are some common things in both unit test and pytest, and frankly, any unit testing framework that you'll come across for any language. First, you need to import the right packages. 
Here I'm importing unit test and nose testing packages. And you need to also import the package you're testing, in this case Norris. The next thing to understand is test suites and test cases. Test suites are groups of tests that you want to execute together. Here they're called class test Norris. Test suites help you organize your tests so that when you run your tests, it's not just a jumble of test results spitting out past you. Test cases are individual tests that you write. For example, test underscore Norris underscore basic. A final thing to mention is the concept of setup and teardown. These are useful steps in a test routine to, well, set up some conditions before testing. Maybe creating a test database, or and adding users to it, or creating mocked JSON objects in our case. Um, and of course, teardown for cleaning up after yourself, dropping that database you created in setup. You can see the setup function at the beginning of the test suite. Starting with the first test, test underscore Norris underscore basic, you can see that I'm just calling the get joke API from our Norris package and testing the result that I get back from the API with the expected result. I'm going to enable the decorator not test on some of the tests so that we can run just one test. When we run the test, you can see that it fails. Looking more closely at the reason for failure, you can see that nose outputs a diff for what failed. PyTest does the same thing. There are a few different values that are different. And why is that? Well, we're testing with a random joke endpoint. And so you're going to get variability in the returned object. So you can see that testing against a live API can prove a bit challenging. And this is where mocking comes into play. Uh, let's review the next test. Test Norris mock. I'm going to adjust my not test decorator while I'm here. You can see that there's a new decorator, patch, and then function name. And the mock get parameter is added to the test function. What's happening here is that the unit test mock package has a few built-in mechanisms for you to configure it and create a mock object. Mock underscore response, mock underscore get dot return underscore value are all available in the test function scope via that patch decorator and mock class. And when we execute the Norris get joke, the mocked version of your method is actually what returns the value. There are two benefits here. One, that the API will always return the same thing. And two, since it's not going over the network, your tests will run faster and not depend on a network connection, like when you're coding during a flight. OK, moving on, let's look at the next test. You'll notice that the patch decorator points to the same function but its namespace is slightly different. I think this is because I'm mocking the function that is called from within the scope of the joke length function. Anyway, the idea is that this test is not just a test of the return from the API like in the other case, but rather the output of the function that doesn't just wrap an API call. All right, now let's take a look at the PyTest version of these tests. A few things to point out right away. You can see that I'm importing two new packages, PyTest and Responses. The different way I'm importing Norris functions aren't significant here. Looking down at the test functions themselves, I've omitted creating a test class, but that doesn't really matter for our example. Let's look at that first decorator, PyTest.Fixture. That is defining a fixture, which is a concept that's part of PyTest. It's roughly the same idea as in the other example where we use the patch decorator, but PyTest fixtures is the way you do this in PyTest. Since we're simulating an HTTP response, I've used the responses package. Responses is a mocking library to create a fake response object. Responses is pretty cool, and uh, you can actually do a similar thing with mocks as well, but you can define an array of responses and um, that will match the URL you're attempting to request anywhere in your program. And it will intercept that request from your application. So when I pass in, um, when I pass in the function my underscore responses as a parameter in my tests, the responses that we've declared are available in the test with no additional configuration. 
When I run these tests, you can see that the output looks almost identical to the unit, bit, unit test based tests. Okay, there you have it. You've seen the basics of how to configure and use Tox, create mocks in unit test, and fixtures in PyTest. These utilities can help a lot when testing REST APIs in your applications. I hope this breaks down some of the barriers you might have faced in adding tests in your applications so that you'll want to learn more and do some experimenting with these tools. All right, we've come to the end of another episode of the Developer Landscape series. If you want to try out some of your new skills, head over to Cisco DevNet at developer.cisco.com. You can also stay in touch with me or ask questions via Twitter at A Roach. Also, follow DevNet on Twitter at CiscoDevNet to keep up with our latest adventures. Thanks for watching.